I'm just going to go through this screen for next 10 minutes and then just just look around what is in this console, how to use it, what is in, in here. So as compared to Active Directory, guys, it has a little more information, but it's not complex. It's, it's very simple to go through. Uh, just like any other machine, so you have vCenter, in vCenter you have a hierarchy, you have vCenter, then data center, then cluster, then ESXi host, you have VMs, and then you have all the, so exactly like this, it has its own hierarchy. Uh, now, in this, <coughs> so, so here, oh, it is being recorded. Okay, so here, Guys, Exchange starts from EMC, number one. EMC is Exchange Management Console. It is, uh, it is the main console of Exchange. So as being an Exchange admin, your most of the time will be spent here. As being a VMware admin, your most of the time is spent in vCenter. As Active Directory admin, your time spent in ADUC. And as SCCM admin, SCCM Management Configuration Manager. So, uh, so in this, it is your EMC. Within EMC, you have everything. You have complete Exchange servers. Now, in this, it starts from the very first here, Exchange server. This is the this is where Exchange server will show you the summary of your environment here. Now, the summary of your environment is databases. Total databases at the moment is one, and then you have total database copies is none is is uh, actually one itself. But there are no other copies in DAG. When we do clustering in Exchange, we are going to create many copies of one database. So if you have many databases, you will have. Now, guys, when the first time you start Exchange man, EMC, when the first time you start, these values will be zero and it would say unavailable the first time when you do it. So what happens is all you need to do is you need to do collect organization health. So uh, it, so when it says unavailable, it's just saying that it does not have the, the data from your exchange server. So all you need to do, you need to do collect organization data health, and it opens this console. And from here, you'd go next and next collect. Now it goes into your environment, collects all that information, and that information will be displayed here on this screen. So this is, this is why in the first, first time, it would say unavailable. The data is not there. So, so one is this. While this is done, so it gives you this summary here. And now in server summary, it shows you that how many servers do you have in this environment. So here, so the collection ended. In, in here, guys, it is also showing you all the PowerShell command that it ran in the, in the background. So this is the PowerShell command it ran for this. This is the PowerShell command it ran for, uh, for collection. Actually, this is the, this is the, command here. This is what it is doing. Now, in servers, it says total number of server is 1. Exchange 2000, 2010 server is 1. 2007, no 2007 server, no 2003 servers. Uh, client access server 1. Hub transport server 1. Unified messaging 0. Exchange 2010 unlicensed. So if you go, how many Exchange 2010 unlicensed? 1. So basically, this summary is very, very important. If you go to any new environment, you can find out how many total mailbox services are there, how many CASs are there, how many hubs are there. So this is all here. And then here it shows you recipient summary. So what is recipient in exchange? Users. Users with mailboxes. So users without mailboxes are not considered as exchange recipient. So here it says you have total two recipients here. Now, if you need to see how many to how many users have mailboxes, you can just go to manage mailboxes. It would show you that the, who who are the two users who have email account. So they so by, by default there are only two that have email. Now, guys, this is very important to know. This is very important to know that although my Active Directory has other users as well. So if I go to my ADUC and open ADUC here, here I see there are other. So there is a guest account which is disabled. Uh, there is another account. Now, these accounts, the, not all accounts will have the mailboxes. So in the beginning, it, it, it is possible. So you need to attach email or give an, uh, create emails for all of them. But once Exchange is created, Exchange is installed on a domain controller, guys, it will ask you to create a mailbox. Now, this is another big difference between 2007 and 2000, uh, uh, 2007 and 2010. 
And that big difference is, in 2007, we used to create mailboxes right from ADUC as well. And now, all mailboxes must be created from here, from Exchange Management Console. In 2007, 2003, we used to create mailboxes from ADUC. But here, if you need to create a new mailbox, you just go here, New Mailbox. So once you create a new mailbox here, let me create just a new mailbox. It's a very simple wizard. It's just saying that, okay, you want to create a mailbox. What type of mailbox do you want to create? You want to create a room mailbox, equipment mailbox, link mailbox. I'm going to go through that later. For now, I'm just creating a user mailbox, yes. And this is an Exchange 2010. This is Exchange 2010. So this is what I'm going to show, yes. So either you go create a user in Active Directory and use that user here with the mailbox. Or you can create a mailbox, and while creating a mailbox, you can create a user as well. So right here, it's for saying what type of mailbox do you need. I need a new mailbox. So Ali is a new employee in our company. We're going to create a mailbox for him. So user mailbox and next. And right here, it's saying, does this user exist in Active Directory? If the user exists in Active Directory, you just go existing users. It will go find that user in Active Directory. Or if not, then you can go new user and you would say, okay, this is a new user. And then you can specify a OU as well, which OUs this user will go into. If not, then this user is going to be in users OU. So, so here, and now I'm going to give this user a name. Ali and M Ali, sorry. Container, container. It's a container. And then again, the same thing that it would ask you for, logon name, M Ali, and the password. We're going to use the standard password. So whoever has exchanged, please keep on doing it, guys. Next exercises, next week, these exercises will, will be more complex. So please make sure that you have exchange ready. And there won't be time to copy existing exchange environment, guys. You, you must be able to install exchange. It's not difficult. Um, now here alias of this mailbox. So alias of this mailbox is ba basically Mali. <laughs> Mali, Mali, M Ali, M Ali. So M Ali, he is Mali of them. Very uh, simple person. So, so Mali, <laughs> Mali, M Ali. So, so, and here, guys, we don't have to select anything in here. Now, here it says that if you have multiple exchange databases, you can create this account in a specific database. Or if, you, if not, it would automatically select a database for us. So for now, we're just going without selecting anything and just create a new user. So it creates a user. It creates a user and it would create a mailbox as well. As soon as you create this mailbox, you can go back to the summary and see that it would show you more recipients are made, yes. So, it would be better Yes, it can be done, yes. And mostly, in most of the organizations, this is how it is done. A new employee joins in. New employee goes to HR. HR uh, clears, clears them. And HR send a request to Active Directory team. Active Directory creates an account, they send a ticket to Exchange team, and then they create an account. So most of the time, guys, in large companies, Exchange admin does not have access to Active Directory. And Active Directory people have no access to Exchange. So this is totally different. But nowadays, guys, this all happens automatically. You don't have to do this manually. It is all done through a script. So you fill the form. That form went to your manager. Manager approves it. It goes to HR. HR approves it. And at the same time, it goes to Active Directory. They just click one button, and everything is done. There are separate admins for Active In large organizations, yes. You don't have domain admin. You're only Exchange admin. You only care about Exchange. Now, here the user is created. Now, the most important thing here is now log in with this account and see that if it is working. Now, guys, in order to log in with this account, first of all, this is my Exchange environment. And here I can see Muhammad Ali account is made. And it is part of canf.pri domain. It's a user mailbox. And the email address is mali at canf.pri. In order to test this account, you need to have a 
email account you you need to have a sorry mail uh, email uh, client so in order to have an email client we have a client machine here on which we can install on which we can install uh, outlook so we can install a, actually i was testing a software on this so you can install a outlook in this in this outlook you get now if you don't have outlook we can use owa now guys how do you know the link of owa guys it's right here so if you go to client access so i mean most of the time you won't know the link of outlook or or if you don't know the link of outlook and you're exchange admin within the console you can go to client access and within client access right here under this it says owa so under server configuration under client access guys write it down in your notes how to find owa how to find owa because this you will be keep on finding every day because we need we need this client every day so you need to go to emc under emc you need to go to server configuration under server configuration you need to go to client access under client access you go into owa and once you open double click on owa it it is here that give you a link so this is the internal link now this link you just right click and copy this link and then take it to internet explorer now internet explorer guys i would i would advise that before running this go into server manager and switch off ie enhanced security so just just switch off cuz it would just keep on asking you so this is ie enhanced security in server manager so once it is there you need to switch it off otherwise it just keeps on asking you many security questions so i just went into server manager and then go into configure ie and just just disable it so i'll i'll close this one more time and go into ie guys this is the first time we're logging into a mailbox so here all you need to do put in this address paste the address that you just copied from client access role and then enter now once you press enter just like in we center it asks you these certificate questions so you just need to go into this second option and once you do now it is connecting to exchange so it's going through cas it goes through cas and cas is trying to connect you to exchange so first of all before it connects you to exchange at this point it is just connecting to cas now yes um do you have to do that like for every single uh, new user that you add in the stream no this is so like, this is just i'm just verifying that if this account works okay. it's all up to you but here since we are we we need to see that if this account works and we need to send email and uh, we need to so that's why i'm doing it okay. so your very first client mail client is email client is uh am ali but before that it is owa you're using owa to connect to exchange right question okay okay so here guys once you do what i do is guys here i'm going to put it in in my favorites here so that i don't have to remember this link uh if it is in your favorites it will be you can just go to now here all you need to do it strictly says use a domain name with this so don't use just a username so you would just say kanf/ali and then the password now here it also asks you if it is a public computer or a private computer guys if you select a public computer then it will have automatically some restrictions on this account in this client if you say it's a private computer then it would have it will give you more features so private computer and you go sign in if you now it is at this point cas is going to dc verifying your authentication and comes back if everything is fine it would let you connect to exchange server so this is how it is connecting so it's going from here to here and here in 2007 2007 it would still owa would still go from here to here to here in in 2007 what about outlook go directly, goes directly to exchange server 2010 it was completely changed now i can do the same thing from my other other uh, other other machine as well since other machines are joined i can log into this machine 
and then here I'm going to log in with administrator so that I have two accounts open and send email between them. This is the task we need to do. So here on this, here it is, so here it is connected. So since it is connected for the first time, it is just say, asking me your, your time zone, your language, once this is done, and it connects you to your mailbox. Now basically, in the next screen, you're connected from here to here, now to your mailbox, so it should show you your inbox, outbox, draft, sent, and everything. So which means this account is perfect, this account is working, but there is one last test to do to send email. Now, in order to send email, the very first email that I do, the very much set, uh, the test that I do, I send email to myself. So let's do it. So here, I'll just go to new, and in new, I'm going to write my own name. So M Ali. Now you can write the complete email address, or you can just go here and, and click this. This will resolve this name automatically. Now this is another test for us Exchange admins. For me. This test tells me your DNS is working fine, your GC is working fine, your DC is working fine. If you write a name and it is not able to resolve it, let's say another name. So here I'm going to say another name and then try to resolve this. It says no match, which means that this either this user doesn't exist or if you 100% know that this exists and it's not, then DNS is not resolving these names here. Now this is first thing. Now here, all I need to do is let's let's do this test here. So here, I just say test, and then test. So it is sitting in draft. So it goes into draft in few moments. Now, if I press send, it is sending. Now it is at this point as being Exchange admin that mail flow should run. Uh, it goes into it goes into the mailbox. Send a notification is sent to Hub. Hub would come and pick that up and would take that email and then put and send it back to the same. So here I received it as well. So if I go into my inbox here, I received it. So this is the very first test you need to do. Guys, this one test alone, how many times? One test alone. alone. This one test alone, guys, this one test alone can tell me my complete exchange environment is working fine. So if users are complaining or they're not able to receive email, it's very slow. So this one test would tell me that this exchange server, at least this exchange server is fine. No issues with that. Because if you would have not received email, then you can say, oh, there is some problem. Now the second test. Second test, just send it to a second user. Now second user, if I go to EMC, I would see here within mailboxes, and I'm going to go and break on five minutes. And my second user is administrator. So on my second mm -hmm. machine, I'm going to open this account. On my second machine, I'm going to open the second account. So let's go to the second machine. What URL do I need? I need the Outlook Web Access URL. Mm -hmm. So before that, I'm going to go to server and just close this down. Uh, disable IE Enhanced Security and open. So where do I get the URL? Where do I get the URL? EMC, client access, OWA, copy this URL, and then go onto this machine, select, and open this. Now, this means machine was a member, machine is accessible, your exchange. Now, at this point, you have only one exchange, so this is connecting to your exchange server. So, now in this, Again, put it into your favorites. And right here, use the second account. So, canx slash administrator and then uh, password sign in. Guys, you see, it, it was only the first time that this took time because it was Exchange was trying to actually activate all those components. Now, Second time, third time, it will be really straightforward. So now I'm logged in with administrator here. On this other machine, I'm logged in with Ali. So here this account. You don't have to be logged in with on your computer with that account. Which one? On DC, you are not logged in. No, no, no. With Outlook Web Access, you can log in with any account <coughs> on any computer. So Outlook Web Access is not tied to your machine. But Outlook is tied to, unless you change it. You can change that as well. 
so here let me now send email to so guys this is exactly what you all need to do as well once exchange is ready so this is what we need to do here i'm sending an email to ali and again resolve name and then do a test to test to and then send an email now it is here i don't see it because i can go into sent and see okay it is sent what does it mean it was delivered it was delivered if there would have been ndr it would have it would have been a, any reason so here i do see it now the last last test on this on basic is a reply back to administrator so here again you would go back reply and i'm going to cc to myself as well in this so this is reply for test 2 So here you should get a notification you received it here and on this on this other on this other end. So guys the, the this is uh, a S. this is HTTPS it uses a self-signed certificate. So you can use public certificates as well but this is a self-signed certificate that exchange automatically creates for itself. So, so guys, this is how this is our very first step into exchange. This is how we do the basic test after install. So we'll go for a break here for uh, 20 minutes, and in exactly 20 minutes, we're starting again. Yay! 20 minutes. So, so